Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with seared scallops on corn cream. That's right, corn cream, which is not to be confused with cream corn. And don't let the fact that there's only like five ingredients in this throw you off. This is going to come out looking and tasting like you spent all day working on it, which you didn't. I mean, come on, it's the middle of summer. Who wants to be in the kitchen all day when we could be outside playing volleyball in half shirts? Okay, so let me show you how to put this together. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and prep our corn. So I'm going to cut the kernels off two ears of white corn. And you'll notice I'm using the cut down into the bowl method, as opposed to the method where I'm holding it in my hand, kind of whittling it off. Apparently after our last corn video, 47 of you cut your fingers. So the legal department asked me if I could do it this way. But anyway, we're going to slice that corn off the cob into a bowl. And then once we've done that, one extra step, turn your knife and use the back to scrape down the cob because all those extra juices running into the bowl are going to give this a little bit of extra sweetness and corny goodness, or is it goodness and corny sweetness? But anyway, once we're done, we're going to take that corn and put it in a saucepan to which we're going to add some butter. And I guess you vegans could use olive oil here, but if you do, I better not catch you putting scallops in this. You're going to have to take some small turnips and carve them into scallop shapes, okay? But anyway, enough with the vegan alternatives. We'll throw in some butter. We'll put that over medium high heat. And while we wait for it to come up to temperature, we're also going to dump in some chicken broth or water. We should also probably give it a pinch of salt and the obligatory shake of cayenne. And we'll give that a stir. And all we're going to do is wait for this to come up to a simmer. We'll turn the heat down to medium low. And we'll just let it cook for five minutes. That's it. So unbelievably simple. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and throw it into a blender and puree it completely smooth. But not quite yet. Let this cool down a little. You generally don't want to pour boiling hot liquids into a blender, so please let it cool down a little bit. And then, like I said, we'll process that until completely smooth, which of course has been edited for time. So let that run for a good minute or two. And then we're going to go ahead and pass that through a fine strainer. And sometimes this is optional, and this time it's not. So we're going to pour it in, we're going to use our spatula to stir it around. And at first it's going to seem like only a little bit's going through, and that you're going to be wasting a lot of corn, but you're not. Keep pressing that corn with the back of your spatula against that mesh strainer, and pretty much everything's going to pass through, except for the most fibrous and toughest bits, which is what we don't want in here. Or if you're going to call something corn cream, it's got to be very smooth and creamy. I mean, that just makes sense. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. In other words, gorgeous looking and luxurious feeling. And that is pretty much it for the corn component. Of course, you should taste this for salt, just as necessary. And then just keep this warm on the back of the stove until needed. And at that point, we can move on to the scallop component, which is just as simple. So I'm going to do three scallops per plate. And it is absolutely critical before we go any further that these have to be perfectly, perfectly dry. So use some paper towels. There can be no, no moisture on the surface. So having these perfectly dry are one of three keys to getting perfectly seared scallops. And we'll move on to the second key factor. We're going to drizzle the oil over the cold scallops, not in the hot pan. So I'm going to drizzle in a couple teaspoons of vegetable oil, something high heat, canola, grape seed, something like that. And then in addition to the oil, we're going to season this up with some salt and some smoked paprika. And that's not just in there for its great smoky, bittersweet flavor. It's also going to give these a beautiful color. And then because I had it, I'm going to throw in one sliced red Fresno chili. And then we'll take a spatula and mix that up very well. Make sure all that seasoning is distributed and the scallops are perfectly coated with that oil. And then we're ready to move on to the third and maybe most important key, a dangerously hot pan. So I'm gonna put that on high for like five minutes. And when you're sure it's smoking hot, although it won't be smoking because there's no oil in it, but when you're sure it's super hot, we're gonna go ahead and place those scallops in. And because the oil's on the scallop, not in the pan, those scallops are gonna sear beautifully and you're not gonna have a whole pan full of smoking, burning oil. So go ahead and place in those scallops. And then once those are in, I'll also take those pepper rings and throw those in the pan and give those a little stir fry while the scallops are cooking. And then we don't really do much for a couple minutes. We just let those sear without peaking. Although, you know what? I totally peaked right here. And I'm glad I did. Check it out. Piece of pepper underneath. Seriously, if you don't believe in Murphy's Law, you've never cooked. Because that stuff happens all the time. But did it affect me? A little bit. But not too much. I just took it off. And gave it a few more seconds. And then started turning those over. So that one was a little messed up because of the pepper. But let me try this one. This should be better. Although, you know what? I put that one down on its side. So I guess I'm over for 2. Let's try another one. All right, it's getting better. So we'll flip those over. And if you're thinking, do we really need to go through all that trouble for just a little bit of browning on the edges? Yes, huge, huge difference in flavor, trust me. And while I'm waiting for mine to finish up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my red peppers from the pan and reserve those. Don't lose those, we're gonna use them in a minute. So we're gonna continue to let those cook. I'm gonna guess and say it's about three minutes per side. 
but just a pure guess. If they feel mushy, they're raw. If they feel hard, they're overcooked. So you really need to try to get somewhere in between. Basically when they spring back to the touch, almost like a chicken breast, that should be pretty close. And right about here, I decided mine were done. So I'm gonna remove those scallops to a warm plate. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And then I decided to do one very fast, very optional step. I threw in a splash of water. And even though that pans off, it still has a tremendous amount of residual heat. So I threw in a splash of water to deglaze along with another little piece of butter, and then my peppers. And what I basically want to do is kind of glaze those peppers in those sweet, caramely, scallopy pan drippings. So we're not really making a sauce here. We're just kind of upgrading our pepper rings. And then last but not least, I squeezed in a little bit of lemon. And even though it looks kind of juicy, that pan was so hot by the time I served this up, all that liquid was gone. And my pepper rings were beautifully glazed, as you're gonna see right now as we plate up. So for final assembly, we're gonna grab a warm bowl we're going to ladle in some of that beautiful corn cream, also known as corn puree, which I don't think is nearly as poetic. And then over that, we'll place our three perfectly seared scallops. Just a beautiful sight. And then, of course, I'll scatter over a few of those red pepper rings, which, as you just saw, were kind of glazed with those pan drippings, butter, and a little bit of lemon. And then I was going to finish this with some fresh chive, but then I remembered I had some radish sprouts. So I used those, which not only look nice, but really work with the flavors here. And those seared scallops on corn cream are done. So summery, so inviting. So let me dig in here. I think this is a spoon dish. And that combination of that luxurious, perfectly smooth, perfectly creamy corn mixture with those meaty seared scallops, which naturally have a sweet flavor, which was significantly accentuated by the searing step. And then as a visual and taste contrast, we have those peppers, adding some heat, adding some texture. That is just a beautiful bowl of summer, all right? So when I think of seasonal cooking this time of year, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm picturing. Simple, easy, and pairs beautifully with ice cold beer. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.